So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to find the maximum and minimum values of the function x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5 on the interval negative 1 to 2. Before we do that, let's draw some pictures. So suppose we have a nice differentiable function on the interval, let's say, 0, 1. Well, we can just look at this graph and see where the maximum value is. That's right about here and see where the minimum value is, right about here. And in both cases, the tangent lines of the graph at those points are horizontal. So in a case like this, we're going to find the max and minimum values by looking for places where the derivative of this function is zero, right? Because the derivative of zero will give us horizontal tangent lines. But what if we have something like this instead? So here, we still have places where the derivative is zero, right, where the, horizontal, where the tangent line is horizontal, but the minimum value occurs here at the end point, and the maximum value occurs here at the other end point. So we're not only going to have to check places where the derivative is zero, but also check the end points. There's actually one other thing that we're going to have to check. If we have a function that looks like this, something like an absolute value, well, the minimum occurs here, but the derivative doesn't exist here. So we also have to check places where the derivative doesn't exist. There may be none, but if there are any, we have to check them. So we have three things in general. Places where the derivative is zero, endpoints of the interval that we're given, and our interval in this case is negative one to two, and any places where the given function is not differentiable. So with that in mind, let's find the maximum and minimum values of this function. So, let's rewrite the function. It's f of x equals x cubed plus 4x squared plus 5. Now, the derivative, f prime of x, is 3x squared plus 8x. Right? Derivative of x cubed, derivative of 4x squared, and derivative of 5 is 0. So what we want to do is set this equal to 0 and solve for x. So if we set this equal to 0, well, we can factor an x out of both of these. So we get x times 3x plus 8 equals 0. So this means that x equals 0 from this one. And from inside here, x is going to have to be negative 8 thirds for this to be 0. Right, because 3 times negative 8 thirds is negative 8, and then plus 8 is 0. So you get 0 and negative 8 thirds. But here's where it's really important to keep in mind what the given interval is. Because our interval is negative 1 to 2. And negative 8 thirds isn't in that interval. It's smaller than negative 1. So this is out. So we have one value at which we want to check the derivative. We also have to check the endpoints, though. So, let's evaluate. f of 0 is going to be 0 plus 0 plus 5, which is 5. f of the left endpoint, negative 1, is what? Negative 1 cubed is negative 1. 4 times negative 1 squared is 4 times 1, so that's plus 4. And plus 5, this is 8. And then f of 2 is 2 cubed, which is 8, plus 4 times 4, which is 16, plus 5, and this is 29. So, we find that of these three values, 5 is the smallest, 29 is the largest, so 5 is our min, and 29 is our max. And that's how you find the maximum and minimum values of a function on a closed interval.